Yes. Slope for number one. So remember, you connect the y's together, and then you also connect the x's together going to the right, okay? So from three to negative four, is it going up or down? Down. You're going to go down, so it's a negative how much? Seven. Seven. Very good. So in the fraction, I know my numerator is negative seven, okay? Uh, what about from six to seven? One. You went up one, so <coughs> positive one. It would just be negative seven, okay? We're going to do the same thing. Connect the y's, connect the x's, and from negative three to negative five is? Yeah, you'd subtract two. From negative nine to negative seven, you would add two, okay? So this one, as it turns out, is negative two over positive two, which simplifies into one. Negative one. Okay. All right, let's do the same thing with this one from 10 to 5 and then from 12 to 12. So, my fraction from 10 to 5 is down 5, so negative 1 minus 5. And from 12 to 12, it went up 0. The answer for this one is? It is most definitely not 0. All real numbers. It's, it's no solution. No solution. No solution. Yeah. It's about slope-intercept form, okay? Uh, slope it. Uh oh. There we go. Slope. Intercept form. Okay. Uh, what is slope-intercept form? Who can tell me what it is? Uh, you always start with y equals, and then you put an x. So what goes in front of X? Slope. Slop. Sloppage. And then what's after the X? Y-intercept. Very good. That's where your Y-intercept goes, okay? Yes, Christian. So, <clears throat> slope-intercept form, yes. Sorry, yeah, let me... In, in, ter, is that better? Yeah, that was a good recovery, right? Yeah. All right. Now, remember, in slope-intercept form, what two things does it give us? Slope and the intercept, the y-intercept, okay? Uh, or you could either say the two things you need from to, in order to write the equation is the slope and the y-intercept, okay? Uh, now we're going to be talking more about what we call standard form. Standard form. Standard. <laughs> okay, here's the thing with standard form. Is on one side of the equal sign is you'll have a number, but other than that, uh, you've got y right up in here and x right up in here. Okay? But there is stuff that goes in front, okay? For example, this is where A is, this is B, and finally C right here. Okay? Now, <clears throat> let me show you guys, there's a very, very, very quick way to find both the y-intercept, the x-intercept, and the slope when it's in this form. Okay? All right? Here's what you do. So let's look right up in here. So we've got uh, we got the y-intercept, right? We've got the x-intercept and some sloppage. Sloppage. All right. Here's the thing with these three. All three of these you're going to show using a fraction. So just make your fraction line right up in here, like this, okay? Uh, and actually, the slopage, let's, let's make it kind of big like this, okay? All right, the y-intercept. What you can do is you got to take uh, the c value, okay, the y-intercept, I'm going to take C right here, like this. And you're going to divide it by the B value. 
Okay, did, does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, a, B, and C in this case are all, they would be numbers. Okay? So let's look at the x-intercept. Actually, let me move it over here. The x-intercept is going to be, it's the same thing, you're going to have C. But now instead of dividing by B, divided by A, all right? Well, all right, with slopage, what you're going to do is you're going to take the A value and divide it by the B value, okay? Except there's just one, uh, one last thing with this, okay? Is it's negative. Okay. It's a negative A over B. Well, remember these have to be in the right form, so as it turns out, these should be points like this right here, okay? This out. The reason we do this, okay, is to indicate that it is an actual point on a graph. Uh, for example, some of you on the test, when you did the y-intercept, you only wrote the number, whereas it, it should have been written as a coordinate pair. Some of you forgot the parentheses, and while I should have marked points off, I did not. Yes. But, yeah, see how this has parentheses around? Uh, actually, I guess I kind of just assumed your seventh grade teacher told you that. Yeah, and I told you to do that. But, uh, so remember, you've got the x, you're going to add the y, and that equals something, right? Uh, so someone give me some numbers. Two. Three. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Eight. Uh, let's make it six. Okay. Negative six or just six? Just six. That's fine. It could be negative, though, right? All right, so if I wanted to find the y-intercept. That's tricky. Okay. Now remember, the y-intercept was the c value divided by the b value, right? And zero this. Well, let's look. What is my a value? Two. Two. What's my b value? Three. Three. What's my c value? Six. Six. So for my y-intercept, I have zero. I've got my fraction up in here. And I've got C, which is 6, divided by B, which is 3. Uh, if you do leave it like this, you're going to miss points. It should be 0, 2. Yeah. Right? You could take this Y and replace it with 0, which would just make this whole thing 0. And then you just got 2X equals 6. Well, 2 times what equals 6? Oh, well, I guess that's the X-intercept. <laughs> it works for the Y-intercept as well, okay? If x is 0, then you've got a 0 here. 3 times what is 6? Well, 2, right? Well, that's what we found to be the case anyways. Okay? So let's continue on with the x-intercept. x-intercept is c divided by a now. So we've got this fraction in 0. So we'll have our point over here. Uh, so what is the value of C? It's 6 still. A is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3, which we've found already, okay? And finally, if we want to find some sloppage, it's the negative value of A divided by B, which is equal to negative. What's the A? 2 over B, which is 3. Bam. It's done. What they're going to do is they're going to say, change this into slope-intercept form. Well, what two things do I need for slope-intercept form? Y and X. Sight. <laughs> what two things do you need for slope-intercept form? Slope and Y-intercept. Yeah. Very good. Slope and the Y-intercept, okay? Well, now we found the slope and the Y-intercept. Now you could write it out, right? So you'd have Y equals the slope, which is negative 2 thirds X plus the y-intercept, which is positive 2. What you guys are going to see is stuff like this, okay? You're going to see something like 6y minus 3x equals 18, okay? This is just meant to confuse you with your a's, b's, and c's, all right? What is the a value? 3. It is not 3. It's 18. It is negative 3. Okay, because the coefficient of x in this is 
the number in front of x, but you have to take the operation with it. Oh, okay. The b value is 6, and the c value is 18. Okay. And then you could figure out your x, y, intercepts, and also your slope. Over. Miss Hodges spent uh, 80 bucks on movie tickets and drinks for her sons of French. The total cost of X movie tickets and white uh, drinks is represented by this. Is this in slope intercept form or standard? Standard. Standard form, okay? Complete the steps below to write the equation in slope intercept form. Well, we don't even have to do all this all garbage, right? If we can find out what the Y intercept is and some sloppage, we're in good shape, okay? So what's the Y intercept? Well, zero. Uh, remember, it's the C value divided by B, so 80 divided by 4? It's 20. 20, very good. So it's 20 right now. Yeah. Wait, so it always starts out as 0? So you know it's no. Y equals it's something X. Y intercept is a positive 20. All we need to do is figure out slope now, which is the negative value of A divided by B. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. Done. Thank you, Christian. It is negative 2. Uh, it would be. Uh, looks like at the bottom they gave us this y-intercept anyways. What does this represent in this situation? Think about it like this. If we were to graph this, 0, 20 would be right here. What does that point represent? It is the y-intercept, but in terms of representing, okay, what we have to do is look at, uh, we have to look at this uh, problem over here, right? So the y is our dependent variable. So it looks like, uh, hmm. I believe this is, uh, where did we go? Okay, yeah, it's, why, what the heck? Oh, it's drinks. There we go. And the X would be tickets. So in other words, what this 0, 20 means is that if they go to the movies, they can buy 20 drinks and no tickets. <laughs> Listen, it's that's something Tomas would do. Something that's something you and Tomas would do. Okay. You yeah. Okay. If you are graphing, you should need three points. If you're using slow, if you're using the x and y intercepts, you only need two. And if we look at the y, the x intercept on this, it looks like it's uh, ten. So ten is right about in here. Once you have those two points, just graph it. Okay. All right, just so you guys know, the x-intercept is where the line crosses the x-axis. Okay. Here's another example. State the x and y-intercept. So, Christian, this, this kind of goes back to this, okay? They are going to ask for the x and y-intercepts. But notice this is in slope-intercept form. Okay, uh, if this happens, to find a, the x-intercept, all you're going to do is you're going to let y equal 0 and then replace it with 0 and solve for x using the switch and stay game. Or whatever method you want, okay? And then you may have to graph, sure. All right, try A and B. Very good, Adam. The x-intercept is 15. If we look at this... No. Nope. To find the x-intercept, again, you're going to replace y with 0, and then you've got negative 1 third x plus 5. Now you just need to solve for x. After doing the switch and stay game, you'll get x is 15. So the x-intercept, as it turns out, is 15, 0. If we were to find that on this graph, it looks like it'd be right here. Yeah. Uh, what's the y-intercept? You can just look at the, the equation for this one. Yeah, very good. 0, 5, which would be right here. Okay.
Sucks. We're gonna wrap this bugger. Wrap this. Done. So let's let's do the actual math in order to find the x-intercept. Okay. So again, we're gonna replace y with zero. Then the rest of it stays the same. One third x plus five. Uh, now what we're gonna do? Some of you would say you subtract five from both sides. Remember, I just like to play the switch and stay game. I'm actually gonna put the x's on the left and the numbers on the right. So zero is just zero, it's good. Negative one third x is going to become positive because it switches. And then we use five, which stays, so let's use. So you got one third x equals five. Well, what you need to do is take this fraction, you're gonna move it to the other side, but when you do that, you gotta take the reciprocal, which is three over one, and multiply. So now you've got x equals five times three over one, which is? 15. With the x and y intercepts, if you have those two points, you don't need three or four points, you just need those two, okay? So, we got the x intercept is 2, 0. We can graph that right away. It's x intercept. It tell, tells us our y intercept in the original slope intercept form of the equation, which is right here. Let me just draw a line. And there's your graphs. And oh, that's, it said the y-intercept, but since it was in slope-intercept form, we're good. All right. All right. Standard form. Listen, if you're struggling with standard form, there's a poster right there. Maybe you didn't notice, but it says standard form. Okay. Also, it has how you find the x-intercept, y-intercept, and slopage. So if you forget, all right, uh, here's something else you'll notice. In this example, you're going to find examples like this in the book. One of the big problems with this is they give you the equation, so maybe the rest of it really didn't matter. Okay. After you have the equation, just find the x and y intercepts. Now, if they ask you to interpret them, that's fine. You may need to look back here for some help. Okay. does ask you now to interpret the, inter uh, the x and y intercepts. Uh, it tells you the x intercept. It tells you the y intercept. So all you've got to do is look at what the labels are in the graph. Well, the y intercept would be 316 yearbooks and zero paper yearbooks. Oh, so these are digital. The x-intercept is uh, right here, 79. So you get 79 paper yearbooks, zero digital yearbooks. All right, Christian's going to do this one for us. Please explain why you do it. Okay. So here's the equation. So I'm going to go 2, 30. Oh, I don't have room, but that's all right. Divided by 2, which is, I just had it, but I'm going to do it. It's... 115, eh, you can't see, but it's 115. So that means that I think it's the y-intercept is 115. Oops. And so then we're going to get the 230 again and divide it by 6. Um, can't go into that, so we're going to 318 minus... 550 Does that even work? It's, it's 38 and a third and a third. Thank you. And that's the x intercept is 38 <coughs> and 1 third. So we're going to go up 115, which is, like, right there. And then 38 and a third is, like, right there. And you just connect the dots. Not very good, there. Christian. All right, now, what we still need from this, it's very good, all right? What we would need still on this is the interpretation of these. So what's the interpretation? 
What is the interpretation of the x-intercept? Well, it looks like you could get 38 and a third of x, which is sandwiches purchased, and zero drinks. Well, what about the y-intercept? Well, y is drinks purchased, and it looks like you could get 115 of those. Exactly, which means you would get zero sandwiches. Okay?